So in the previous video we discovered there was a back drive issue, so basically the knee was too powerful and it was back driving the motor when the power was off. So we tried to fix that with a gas strut. Unfortunately, this happened. Use the crowbar and close that gap up again. Oh, there we go, yeah. Oh. Oh, have we found a... We found a neutral point. Yeah, I think that gas strut's a bit too powerful. So, let's go and fix that. back to the workshop and welcome to this ongoing series to try and add a little bit more functionality to this drill press. So the first thing was to add a little bit more space underneath the chuck by allowing the knee to travel a bit more. Second thing was to add a motor to the knee just to save me manually winding it up and down. And the third thing was optionally maybe I could add a little bit of functionality onto that like drilled can cycles and things like that just for fun. So in this video we'll make up some parts for the stepper motor brake and get that installed. But before that we need to sort out that gas strut problem. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll take this apart, we'll get this gas strut fitted and uh, just basically repeat and see how we get on. Okay, we're ready to give it another go. So we'll switch this on and let's just see what it does as it is. We got the speed set quite low, 25 RPG units, but pretty low. So let's just see what that does. Okay, going down. Uh, I think it's lifting the bearing again, but this time probably because the Trying to overcome the stiction. I've just been struggling with that using the crowbar. I'm trying to go down and then I heard a creak and I thought, what's going on? I left the safety wood in. So let's take that out and try again. Don't have to lift a bit now. It might be that the strut just needs a bit of uh, moving up and down, breaking the friction, bedding it in. Let's just push that down again with the crowbar. So we're getting close to the bottom now, probably got about another 40 mil to go. I'll leave that, leave that loose for now because I've got to tram it in. All right, let's keep going. Let's just see how fast we can get this thing. So that's on 25. Fifty-five, sixty-five. Okay, I guess the gas spring's helping. Seventy-five. Nice. Eighty-five. Okay. 95 I'm pretty sure it will stall out because it did before even when it was not connected to a load so yeah okay all right 90 wow okay that's a pretty good speed as well you know for safety and all that no not got to the top yet Okay, 
we're at the top. Uh, let's see if it will go up and down at that speed. Now it's had one run. Alright, looking good. Staying in the bearing. Starting to lift you up there. And it's gone back in. Yeah, the voice might be helping, but also just breaking the friction a bit. A few minutes ago I thought I'd run out of travel because I was looking where that is relative to that but of course that's the fixed end that doesn't move um, so good news is got plenty of travel I wonder why I did that yeah that makes more sense however found a little problem it's not easy to see but effectively the bottom of that block the long block that connects to the gas strip when it comes down it fouls against the head of that bolt. Let me just see if I can show you. We'll go up a bit and then come down. Yeah, so you can probably see a witness mark on top of the, the head of that cap head there. About there somewhere where it's hit it. at the CNC machine and I've just got the part clamped in there I've got a little jack underneath that side and we'll just decided we're just going to machine a little pocket out there about two millimeters and that will give clearance uh, for the bolt head so this can move up and down past it so we'll just do it manually and uh, work to these scribe lines down here Okay, machined a little bit of clearance, so hopefully that will do the job. So let's get this back together and then we'll try it again. Okay, I got the new gas strut in, let's go down. Looking pretty good. Just starting to lift ever slightly, but it's getting better every time I move it up and down. Right. travel of the strut so yeah that's all worked out so there we are fully down now it looks like we've got loads of space but obviously we haven't got the quill in and the chuck all right i think to be honest that strut's okay it just needs a bit of bedding in Bit just about the gas strut and why I went for the strategy that I'm going for because I did have some interesting comments in the discussion uh, on the previous video. So what I've tried to draw up here is slightly different to how I drew it before but what we ultimately care about I guess or want to consider at least is the force on the ball nut. And I've got zero force here, I've got a downward force this way so anywhere up to 500 newtons this way and an upward force anywhere up to 500 or more that way. So that's, that's like our no force on the ball nut at all, and then upward and downward. And then we've got the table position along here. So when it's fully up, we've got the lowest gas pressure, and that's on this side. And then as the table goes down, the gas pressure increases. So the dynamics of the system changes. So this is when it's fully down. Now, if we consider the simple case when there's no gas strut on at all, we've just got the table, and obviously that's pushing down. Uh, I did weigh all the individual bits and estimated a few of them, some of the lighter ones, and I reckon we're about 48 kilos, so probably about 480 newtons downwards. So that's, that's this line here. 
So this, I guess you could say, this is no strut at all. And then what I think I ended up with was when I had the 500 Newton strut on. So when it's fully down, that's the maximum pressure. So at this point here, if I take that point there and add 500, well, actually, I think it was actually de developing a little bit more than that, plus the stiction. Uh, I ended up at this position. So it was trying to push the whole table up and trying to push the bearing out of the housing. So it was all positive above the line. And when I came down, yes, the, oh, sorry, when the table went uh, up, gas struts extending, less pressure. So I ended up at a position here where it was lower, but ultimately it was still, even at the bottom, trying to push it up out of the bearing. So it's this point, add the 400, takes you up to there, although I think it's actually a bit more. So essentially the whole line was net positive, always pushing out. I didn't really want that. I wanted um, it lower. Now, there's a lot of people who've made modifications to CNC machines. There was a comment in the um, last video as well, where the strategy is to generally have the gas strut quite low and always have you know, a net force down under every circumstance on a lead screw or whatever. Um, I'm deliberately not trying to go for that. What I'm trying to go for is, and what I think I've got now, more or less, is this blue one where the neutral point in the middle here is about in the middle of travel. And then I've got a net upward force, which is quite small, and a net downward force that's quite small. Now, if you had a, a, a lead screw and a lead nut with you know, backlash in it and so on, you probably wouldn't want that. You'd want it always to be loading. You'd want it always to be in this side down here. But the bore nuts, I've measured it years ago and put it in one of the old videos. It's about 50 microns of backlash. So 50 microns of backlash in the Z position of the table. I'm really not worried about that at all. It's, you know, that's not really going to matter. What's more important to me is if, well, let's put, take the two scenarios. If you take this scenario here, um, uh, you know, it's, it's always got this downward force on the ball screw. Uh, if you, yeah, if you think about how much effort the motor's got to uh, put in here, there's 300 newtons of downward force, so it's got to lift up that amount. And at this end, maybe 200. So it's always lifting up two to 300 newtons, no matter what. So if you're trying to peck drill, I'm still trying to get that to work. You know, the CNC uh, can cycles where you want the need to come up to do a drilling cycle and keep the quill stationary. You're having to overcome this every time. So it's going to limit the amount of drilling force you can apply and so on. And it, you know, there's a chance it might not work. So because I've got a ball nut, and I've got negligible backlash. If I go in the center, or more or less, the maximum force the motor has to exert is maybe 50 instead of two or 300, plus or minus 50 Newtons. So it's got to go up or down a little bit, but otherwise it's it's almost balanced. That gives me the best chance. And again, I'm not worried about uh, back dry, um, not worried about, sorry, the backlash in it, because it's gonna be negligible. So that is to explain why I'm doing that not doing the more common and more popular one like this where you have a lead screw uh, so that's my logic anyway and feel free to disagree do something different if you're implementing this but that's why i'm doing it like that and um yeah it might be i can never get the can drill cycles to work i don't know but it gives me an opportunity and i don't think for me there's anything really lost in this approach okay All right, so the stepper motor brakes finally arrived, so we can have a little look at it. Um, so I've got it hooked up to the power supply. I'll show you it working in a minute, but actually before we do that, we'll just uh, give you a little tour of what we've got. So it came with this little square nut in there. Actually, let's just talk about that for a minute. So it's got these little spring-loaded features that try to hold it in there. A little bit of resistance, but not too much, just in there. And then you've got two little grub screws and then there's a flat. So obviously that's the bit that will connect to, well, normally that would be, um, you'd have a double-ended um, servo or stepper and the D part of the flat would go into there. And then that just sort of sits, just pushes in there as a light fit into that, which I think, see that disc there is like a friction material. So obviously that's square, so that locks into there. Um, so the way it works is at the bottom here, we've got a solenoid uh, and then there are a series of springs around here. And basically it's pushing a plate up, uh, probably, I think it's this plate actually, that's kind of semi-trapped or floating in there. So the springs push that up, push that friction material up against this top plate and obviously that locks it and it's supposed to be two Newton meters, but I can't move it. So yeah, pretty good. All right. Um, so to energize it, so that's it, obviously de-energized, that's locked. We'll put 24 volts on the coil. The solenoid will pull 
this plate down against the springs and then this kind of friction material will just be sort of loose in there and it's really easy to turn there. So let's just hook that up. Uh, it's been a solenoid, doesn't matter which way around it goes. So I'll just put that one on there. And it will make quite a loud click because it's on the bench, but yeah. apart from that. Uh, right. So here we go. Now we've got our 24 volts, so just for interest, it's pulling just over 4 watts, so nearly 0.2 amps, so not too much on the power supply. And then uh, that little bit there, you see, is quite free and easy, easily rotates. And then this will sit at some position in there, depending on exactly you know, where you actually set it on the stepper. And that's kind of it, so that's nice and free. So actually, let's just see, I guess it's that plate there. Let's just see if that moves up. This plate here moves up when I pull the cable. Yeah. Yeah, it's this. It doesn't need to move much, does it? So I guess if I pull that down against the springs. Oh, wow, that's... Oh yeah, I can move it a bit. That's pretty tight. So that's loose and tight. All right. <laughs> Get that back in the middle. Somewhere there. All right, so there's our stepper. Or stepper, or stepper brake, rather. Um, I had to look around... Uh, quite a bit to find this because they tended to come on the end of the steppers as you would imagine I did find stepper online had these in stock for about 28 pounds which I thought wasn't too bad but then it was about 30 pounds for shipping which given you can get this in the stepper for 60 shipped over seemed a bit strange but yeah okay I guess the stepper with the brake on it is probably already in the UK in a warehouse and they've shipped it over already and these because you know how many people buy these I don't know uh, it took a while to arrive, so I think this came straight from China, and therefore, yeah, the shipping and everything was had to be added. Anyway, so that's our break, so we can have a little look and see if that might be useful and how we're going to use it in the project. Just thought I'd try one more thing. So this is the three newton meter uh, stepper that I ordered quite a few weeks ago. So you can see there, three newton meter, uh, four point two amp. It's a pretty low inductance, so around one point eight or two, something around there, maybe three. Can't remember. Pretty low. Uh, unfortunately it's a four wire, in my haste to order it, I did order a four wire, um, I prefer to have eight, that gives me some options to how I wire it parallel serial, but I think for the job in hand this will probably be okay, it will mean um, it will be more set up for speed rather than torque, but hopefully plenty there, anyway I've got it now. The one thing I wanted to point out though was I did notice the uh, threaded hole pattern in there, so it's like an M3 or something, and actually, oh, that way. It does actually line up quite nicely with that. So the only thing that's missing is I haven't got the double-ended shaft. I've only got the one coming out the top. So <laughs> could order another one of these with the shaft on and then that bolt straight on. It'd be nice and simple. Or I've got a bit of an idea about I think I can just machine one adapter plate and get all this to work. Um, you know, sort of interface it in the top here, but I'll have a think about that and decide which way to go. So my original plan was um, take that out, obviously put this motor in and I'd have to cut a hole in the table all the way to the bottom, but that's no problem. Okay, so if we imagine this is that pulley that goes on there, so what I think I'll do, I'll make a kind of dummy intermediate shaft that's self-supporting, so that will go into there, uh, obviously on top of there. That will go into a plate, which we need to machine up, and then into that plate, I'm going to press two of these little flange bearings. They've got an 8mm hole in the centre, so they'll press in uh, sort of top and bottom. So they'll be next, and they'll be housed in a little plate that we need to machine up. And the reason we need that plate is because it acts as a kind of housing and uh, a connection point for lots of different things. So first of all, there'll be, this is the brake. It'll be fixed in via these 3mm holes here onto the back of the stepper and the dual shaft would come out the back and there's your brake. Uh, this doesn't have a shaft out the rear and the other one I bought as well, it does, it's only single ended. So this intermediate shaft is going to come out of there, go into those two bearings and then through the plate and then the shaft will be picked up and locked by that nut there onto the friction material. 
So that'll be next. And then I'm going to have some standoffs. And they will go into this big three newton meter uh, stepper. So you normally you can see the, uh, the threaded holes where that would go if you put it on the rear, like that. But obviously there's no, there's no shaft coming out to accept that. So it's going to be sort of that, that, then that. Go through like that. I'm going to stay. Yep. Um, and then this intermediate kind of floating shaft that's holding those bearings that'll go all the way through, and then it comes out this side. Uh, this is held by posts back to that main plate, and the bit that goes in there is oh, it's here. It's over here. You know, standard sort of stepper coupler. Bit annoyed. I just looked at this, and I ordered an eight by eight. So this is uh, eight millimeters holes holes in both ends and sent me an 8 by 10 you see that's 8 there and it's 10 there I don't know whether to send it back ask for a new one or just turn up a little uh, adapter obviously that's too big to fit on there but anyway that will go into there and join it all together so that is the master plan so I've drawn up the plate in CAD and we're ready to CNC machine this but let me just talk you through what we've got so we've got a little counterbore pocket here you can see in the section which uh, this flange bearing will press into on one of the sides. On the other side, it won't, it doesn't need to go into a, a recess. Um, so it's only recessed on one side. So the bearings will go one each side. That's for the shaft to go through. And then we've got these holes here that allow you to bolt on uh, the posts that hold the stepper motor right at the bottom. And there's a few little M3 fixings there that hold the brake on. And then the tapped M5 are to hold this adapter plate onto the main plate that's already there. You know, the big plate that's got everything on. And that's kind of it, really.
So the M3 holes are pretty small, so I just spot drilled those on the CNC machine. And then here I am just on the drill press, just lining up on them and taking them out to the tap size. And then after all that, here we are. So we've got our bore and our counter bore, so we'll press the bearings in there in a minute. And then these four fixings are to hold the whole thing together. Um, and then there'll be tapped holes there. Uh, I haven't tapped those yet because I want to use those as transfer punches onto the plate to transfer those across there. And then those will be tapped to hold that in place. And then we've got our four M3 tapped holes and hopefully uh, the brake will fit onto there. Yeah, that lines up nicely. All right, progress. So uh, I think the next step, yeah. So to be able to tap those holes across, which will be the fixings, I think we're basically going to need to take a lot of the drive system out. So we'll get it blocked up with wood, get the drive system uh, removed, and then we can get this yeah, sort of marked through, drilled out, and then I can finally tap these and we can mount it. All right, let's do that next. So the first thing we can do is actually check that fits. So that should line up nicely. Which it does. And the holes line up. Um, of course it's not going to go on this way because uh, these will be tapped and I'll need clearance in here. But I've only piloted these out to, what have I done? I think 4.2. Well, I've got it lined up and I was going to drill through, but yeah, I can't get the drill in. So I'm going to have to take this off. So because I've got a few things to do in this area, I decided just to strip the whole thing down and then we could do three jobs in one. Now I've got the main lifting system removed and I've got this uh, plate we just made nut and bolted there. So we've got it nicely aligned. Now I can drill through these as a guide, drill those out there, then open them out to the clearance and then come back, remove this and tap those to M5. So that's the first job. And then the second job is here. So this is the lift mechanism with the pulley, the bearings and the housing. And obviously it does actually pull through a little bit with the tiny bit of gas load that's on there. I think over time that'll bed in, it'll pretty be pretty small. But I do want something to retain this. And I came up with a load of different ideas. One was to drill and tap the end of this as a face and then make a kind of a uh, hat that went over the top and it pressed against the bearing lightly but you know, there's no way of adjusting that other than taking it off putting it in the lathe turning a tiny bit off and getting it so it just rests gently against there really a better idea was and i got the materials ready and a load of drawings again was to make a longer one of these put a thread in it an m39 i think i'd go for because this is 40 millimeters diameter and then get a screw on nut, a lock nut which i can just lightly preload against that and make it long enough so I can have another, I had another thrust bearing I even ordered for that. You know, so another thrust bearing would go on and then, you know, so I'll do it properly. So it was sandwiched between two, two uh, axial bearings and a lock nut and then a little grub screw to hold that on the thread. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, it would have been the proper way to do it, but I think because there's going to be so, so much, um, well, there's hardly any upward thrust now, it's really going to be mainly down. I think I'm just going to go the simple route, which is just put a little groove in here and put uh, yeah these little snap rings here and just clip one of those onto there. There should be no upward load most of the time. I guess if a drill snatched in brass or something, there might be a little bit of upward load, but I think these would be good enough to resist that and stop it moving upwards. So we'll just mark that out. In fact, while we're here, we'll do it now. I'll just uh, scribe it and then we'll take it apart. Oh, that wasn't all the way in, okay. And then take it to the lathe and just machine a little groove. Pretty much up to that line. I think that'll be, that'll be good enough. All right. Actually, that's the second job done. Uh, so what's the third job? Well, that's over here. 
So I've got this marked out here and that's because we need to cut some of this away. I'm going to cut all the way through in fact and just relieve a little slot. And that's because I'm going to use this big motor here. It's three newton meter motor. And then you've got the coupler and then you've got the brake and everything in the plate. It was never going to fit and it will pretty much uh, come out at the bottom of the worktop down here. All right, so back to the first job, which is we just need to drill these out. These are currently 4.2 um, because they're the tap size. This will ultimately have a thread in it. Actually, before we do that, job number zero. Let's finish that coffee before it gets cold. Oh, right. Now we're ready. In fact, while we're here, we'll tap these out. It doesn't matter if we go into this material because I'm going to open this into a clearance in a minute. So let's get going on that. A bit tighter might help. Okay, so we're set up on the lathe now. It's a bit awkward to hold this part because that's pressed into there and obviously I don't want to take that out. I'm really just holding it. It's just gripping it on these outside jaws, just on the outer flange there, which I think in turn is a press fit on there as well when they make it. So uh, I guess I could maybe try and get some tail support in here, but I haven't got one of those kind of pipe uh, tail ends that goes in there, like a ball nose thing. Um, Maybe if we just take it easy, we'll just see how we go. I'm only on this tool is 1.5 millimeters, so we'll just yeah, going to use that for the grooving. The circ clip is 1.75, so we'll just index that across a little bit and just take it nice and steady and uh, see if we can get that groove in there. Oh, damn it. It just grabbed and snapped the end of the tool off. Okay. It was starting to chatter. That was the warning sign, I guess. Wasn't recording, of course. Alright. Well, maybe we've gone deep enough. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll need to repair that. All right, let's see if we can recover this. All right, well, I managed to hammer that flange back square again, so it sort of looks okay. And annoyingly, while I was doing that, I thought, hang on a minute. I'm pretty sure when I was putting this together, I did have a mandrel that I made up. And sure enough, here it is. And it's quite a nice fit onto there. Yeah. So, uh, I think what we'll do, we'll just get this set up in the lathe, nut and bolt through there, and then uh, we'll get back on track. Okay, so here we are with the setup I should have done in the first place. We've got a mandrel here, we've got a bolt, I have up to, because uh, the threads were too long, just put a few washers under there. And then I've managed to dress up the edge of this again, so we've got a new cutting edge, and hopefully we can carry on where we left off. all that machining we've got our little groove in there and I've got a little lead-in chamfer just to help me get that uh, clip over there right let's put it back together so, hey, axial bearing first and that goes on top of there try and get this through straight oh don't get stuck Okay. 
bit of luck, that groove should be pretty much flush with that bearing. Onto there. Right, let's get the circlip fitted. Oh, that's it flying across the workshop. I've only got these, I've had them years, and I don't use them very often, but when I do, they're a right pain. They've got interchangeable tips on a common handle, about as cheap as you can buy. I end up nut and bolting them together because they sort of fall apart. And just when I was trying this earlier, just test fitting on the lathe, the two little pins on there, they're not that big. One of them's just bent and it kept bending and eventually it broke. So yeah, I might treat myself to a nice dedicated set where each plier has a certain function rather than this universal, yeah, whatever that is. So anyway, it's all we got now. We'll try and get that circlip fitted with these and maybe I'll treat myself to a nice pair. these things right I'll persevere here and I'll bring you back when it's done Time to cut that hole in the worktop to allow the stepper to drop down. Uh, I use this little vibrating saw I've had for quite a long time. This is a Bosch PMF 190E. And it's pretty useful if you want to cut square holes or right up to an edge like this. Now I've got two uh, blades with it, it's kind of round one and then there was a square one as well. They're not massively sharp anymore, I've had them quite a long time. I really need to get some new ones, but anyway, uh, we got there in the end. Tidied it up with this little uh, one inch chisel. Next up we'll start some of the assembly, so we'll press the bearings in. These are the little uh, flange little top hat bearings. I don't know if I'll need the press or... Yeah, I'll press that home. that bit of glue or something All right the other side yeah I thought they were gonna be a light push fit but alright let's take them over to the press Okay. 
So that one should be slightly proud, that's okay. Because that's on the uh, upper side. And on that side, it's flush. Spins okay. All right, let's carry on with the assembly. Okay, I think we've got all the bits and pieces we need to uh, do a dry assembly. Um, so I turned up these standoffs on the lathe, just uh, got thread in that end, a little bit of relief for some clearance, and then they threaded into the stepper. We also threaded the stepper motor as well. I find that a little bit more convenient than trying to get a bolt from that end. I always find they're a really tight fit, so I've got that kind of threaded in there as a standoff, and then we'll get a bolt down this end. Um, and then off camera, I just turned up this bit here, just lidish the shaft so it was a really nice fit in the bearing because it was slightly oversized and just machine that little flat on there because that goes onto the square drive which is part of the brake system so that goes in there and that goes onto there yeah so that locks that in place and we'll do up the grub screw and then we've obviously got our pulley and then we've got our connector between the stepper and the shaft and a load of hardware right let's start putting it together Positive. Turn the brake off. Or on, I guess. Oh wow, it's actually moving this plate. All right, how much I can do about that. All right, on with the build. Let's get the stepper motor on next. Right, well, it's all together. Let's see if it works. So it's now obviously got the brake on. Yeah, I can move it ever so slightly because this plate that it grips against has got a tiny bit of free play on those posts. But as you can see of that, it's that much. And then. Free to rotate. And then locked. Alright, so I've got all the electronics uh, wired in. I had to move the control system right underneath the knee, so we'll just watch out and make sure it doesn't hit it because the uh, wires from the stepper are quite short. And I thought, well, should I lengthen them? Well, they're going to need to change for the final installation anyway. So for testing, I've just pushed it up to here and we've got the new stepper connected. Um, and then I've got a switch down here, one out of my box, and that uh, intercepts the 24 volts so we can turn the brake on and off. So we can release the brake, go up or down, then put it back on, uh, rather than me trying to make contact with that all the time. So we're ready for some testing. So I've got it set up at a low speed. Um, let's see what happens. Okay, so let's go down on the down arrow. Uh, let's go up. All right, well, I could swap some of the wires around just to make it go the other way, but for now, yeah, I'll just leave it. Uh, I'll just change the markings. It's arbitrary anyway. So, all right, so we want to go down on this one then. Right, I think I can see what's happened. You see just inside there, uh, the ball screw is not in the middle of that hole, it's off to one side, which probably means it's gone down and it's hitting the wooden table. It's not 
it's not going through it's not going through that hole there Oops. can we see yeah it's uh, hitting the table so basically I need to loosen all this up loosen that up there and loosen this up and play games with this thing again oh, okay and get it uh, aligned so it's in the centre all right let me sort that out and then I'll bring you back so I'll turn this part down on the lathe and left a little uh, top hat ridge on there and then bored the centre out to size and then it was quite a nice fit in the hole there so I just uh, tapped it into place So before I had these blocks of spacers and you can see they're barely fitted across there, you know, sort of fall down and so on. And then on the other side, I had these, these were like nut plates. And then this little plate here was trying to hold it in place. And there was a thread in there. Basically it was a pain to line up. So as is often the way in a workshop, you tend to make T-nuts quite a lot, even though you could go out and buy them, but I need them now. So here they are, just made two little uh, T-nuts that will go in there the inside of that slot and then I've just turned these little bits upon the lathe and these will be the new kind of posts that will go in there on each side so they're all the same length as that stand off there so it should be nice and even somewhere there Looks like it's pretty much in the middle of that. So that took most of the afternoon to do that, but I'm glad I did it because just setting that up with those little T-nuts under there and having that guide tube in there just to guide it in, yeah, that made it so much easier. So no regrets there. Right, let's turn it on and uh, we'll go up, get the wood out and then see if it runs. Okay, so we've got the brake. That's off, I think. On, off, yeah. Right, we wanna go up first so we can get the wood out, which I think is Opposite now, isn't it? So it's that one. All right. All right, let's go down, which is now this one. Looking good, bearing looks good. Let's see how fast we can go up, which is now down. <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Somewhere there. So there's a couple of things we can try just before we finish off. So one of them is, uh, you know, how good is this brake? So at the moment it's uh, it's released. So if we go to there, okay, the brake's on. Okay, so up here I've just put a scrap piece in the vise. It looks like something off an old CNC machine. Who knows? But it looks like I've had some practice in it anyway. So uh, that scrap, we'll use that. And all the electronics are down here, and they've got vent holes and things. I don't want any swarf going in, so. Just see if we can uh, block that off. And then what we'll do, we'll just see if we can drill a hole. And with the brake on, that is on, isn't it? Yeah, the brake on. Uh, will this sink down? I guess what we should do is mark it so we can see. So currently there for the top. 
Okay, here we go. So that's a 10 mil bit, no pilot. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to do any more because <laughs> there's wolf going everywhere down here and yeah, I definitely don't want to go near this bit with the mains voltage in. Right, has it moved? I don't think so. It's not the same position. I didn't see it drop. It's, it's held it. All right. First test passed. Right, next test. Uh, I've just had to put that down so you can actually see. Can we pet drill with the knee? 10 mil into that. So quills at the top. Let's turn this right down to give it a chance. And uh, it breaks on, isn't it? <laughs> That'll be why. Okay, break off. Obviously, that will all be sorted in the instrumentation and the electronics. When you want to move, it'll take the brake off. When you stop moving, it'll put it on, right? But for now, I have to do it manually. Okay, it's nice and slow. Turn the drill. Can we drill a hole? Well, I think we'll call that a success. Uh, can you peck drill with the knee? Uh, absolutely. Uh, didn't feel like it was struggling at all. Um, I started by pecking the hole just so it would break the chip. Um, and then about halfway through, just held the button down and it just fed its way through nicely. So 10 mil hole through aluminium, no problem. Obviously steel will be a bit tougher, but it feels like it's got potential. Um, all right, so that opens up some possibilities and I guess makes all this extra effort worthwhile okay so i think we're really starting to get somewhere now the gas strut that's working well i think i've got that dialed in about the right kind of force so that's working um i've got that guide tube down there so it makes it much easier to assemble and it also means that the ball screw can't catch on one of those edges on the table or on that you know it has to go down that tube and then the little standoffs and the t-nuts that was so much easier to assemble it like that I've uh, upgraded the motor, so it's now a 3 newton meter motor, 4.2 amps, though we're only running on half current at the moment, so maybe a bit more to come. Uh, crucially, we've got that brake working. We know a couple of things, so when we power off, uh, the brake holds it. Uh, also, if we drill and the brake's on, it doesn't slip. Well, I've tried it with a 10 mil drill anyway. Um, I guess, you know, I could go in size, but it feels like that's got potential. Um, and... We can peck drill using this machine as well, so it will lift the knee up and drill a hole as you've just seen. Okay, so it's good progress, but there's plenty left to do. Uh, I want to make a cover that goes over that belt so I don't get my fingers or clothing caught in the here. Uh, also sort of protect the wiring and everything. Uh, all that's got to be completely redone and I need an enclosure for it. I think I'll mount it up near the digital readout in a vertical style with the buttons at the top. So it's sort of integrated with the digital readout, but you know, that's in the future. Um, I need to get a relay board so the Arduino can control the brake so it can switch it on and off when you need to move it up and down and then you know, turn it back on again. Um, I think somewhere I've got a 24 volt supply so I'll replace that. That will go in the cabinet. Um, yeah, the DRO that's been sitting over there, that's the Z DRO for the knee. That needs to go back on um, but it can't go around the back anymore because it was driven by the table with a big block that came out the back so that will be, uh, be mounted on the side. I started making some of the brackets, but I thought I'd better get this sorted out first. Um, so I've got that job to do. 
And then I've got to get these um, DROs plugged back into the readout. That's pretty trivial. And I think, <laughs> I think then we are, oh yeah. Um, and the quill, oh, you can just about see it there. The quill guide has got to have a relief machined in it. So we've got clearance for the gas strut bar and then that can go back on. So plenty, plenty to do. So if you've got this far, well done. Uh, you've clearly got the same illness that I've got and you like messing about with these kind of things. Um, if you want to see how this continues, feel free to subscribe. And if you want a notification, don't forget to click that bell. And then when I upload the next video, you'll be reminded. Okay, all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching and see you next time.